The following video today is brought to you by Robinhood. Stay tuned till the end of the video to find out how to get a free stock from Apple, Ford, or Sprint. I remember that when I was in high school during the 2012 election, right after Obama won a second term in the White House, I had a teacher say that we may never see a Republican president ever again. And he was not alone with that belief. The American right wing at that point had an image issue of being authoritarian, prudish, and wanting to get involved with other people's business. The 2000s saw them rise against rap music and Grand Theft Auto, losing issues for younger voters. Looking at the electoral map back then made it seem like Republicans had no path to victory again. Only four years later, however, and... Donald Trump wins the presidency. So what on earth happened in such a short period of time to get more people voting for conservatives? Well, in this video, I'll be sharing my hypothesis on how 4chan and a new young breed of online conservative personalities were able to successfully shift perception of both the Democrats and Republicans in a matter of years. Before we start, however, I just want to make it clear that I'll not be giving any personal political opinions in this video. It honestly doesn't really matter what side of the line you fall on to agree with my theory. Also, the scope of this video will be very small. It will mainly be pertaining to younger voters on the internet. That's what I know, so that's the only thing I could really talk about. I personally just find it fun observing these social changes, so let's get started. Going back to my high school classroom six years ago, what my teacher didn't see coming was that there was going to be a shift in American politics, where the right wing with the help of the internet relabeled themselves as the fighters to protect free speech. I think a great first step in understanding this shift would be good old Gamergate in 2014. Depending on who you ask, this hashtag was either about the organized harassment of women in gaming or the calling out of unethical and biased game journalists that were pushing a left-wing agenda. We can get into the specifics of this controversy another day, but what you need to know is it stirred up anger in young male gamers, who felt they were being attacked by these publications that were supposed to be for them. This would be a lot of young people's first foray into politics, and it did not paint the left-wing in a very positive light for most of them. Before Gamergate, 4chan was fairly apolitical in a way. Sure, they would go after their targets, but oftentimes they would simply go after whoever they felt would lead to the most entertainment. But Gamergate in some ways changed that. Now there was a visible resentment to journalists, who they felt were pushing an agenda rather than reporting on facts. And they weren't necessarily right-wing at that point. But as the saying goes, my enemy's enemy is my friend. Republicans were known to go after gamers since 1999 with the Columbine Massacre, but they saw this new group as an opportunity to recruit young people onto the right wing. A year later, another turning point happened that I feel had a major impact on where the political lines were drawn in America, which was the legalization of gay marriage in all 50 states but not for the reason you may think. When the ruling was made by the Supreme Court after decades of fighting, most Republicans accepted defeat and moved on from the increasingly unpopular policy position. With that huge social issue out of the way, many Democrats were left picking the next social fight they were going to take on. These included gender and in some cases even sex being a social construct, allowing transgender women to compete in the same sports leagues with biological women, and having five-year-old boys that identify as girls having hormone therapy to stop them from going through puberty. Now I'm not here to argue what the correct point of view is on these subjects. You can fight that out in the comments for all I care. But what can't be denied is that these new social fights are currently pretty unpopular with the general public. A politician will call them losing issues. This has led to an aggressive fight to change that perception, with journalists on sites such as Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, Vice, and Vox making articles supporting these new ideas. With these fresh policies being put out into the world, you had a new breed of conservative, classical liberal, and libertarian voices appearing in the online landscape to fight against these so-called social justice warriors. While the internet had been around for a good decade and a half to the general public at this point, I feel this is really when it started to impact the Republican political discussion. People like Steven Crowder, Ben Shapiro, Dave Rubin, and Jordan Peterson emerged as voices against these new left-wing ideas, and they were extremely successful. Gone were the days of right-wing commentators being thought of as Fox News and AM radio hosts, aka platforms for old people. 
This new wave embraced the online world with obnoxious titles that you couldn't help but click on. YouTube is filled with gems such as Social Justice Warrior Get Owned in Epic Rant or Ben Shapiro Destroys College SJW Snowflake with Facts. That second one, by the way, is actually a parody video, but you wouldn't be able to tell since it's pretty spot on. Speaking of owning college SJWs, the university system has also been another effortless target in recent years as well. It's all too easy to goof on 18 year olds getting mad over people clapping their hands or white people wearing dreadlocks. Because of this, they've become the de facto punching bag of the online right. It seemed like every week you'd have a new video of some kid freaking out over a conservative speaker. Then it would be spread around online as an example of the left being out of control. Then the next week they'd move on to the next one. This cycle turned out to be extremely effective. Getting back to 4chan, the turning point that I feel really cemented their political beliefs was Donald Trump's candidacy for president. For a site known for outrageous stunts that cause havoc, they really liked Trump's brash style and messaging. So the site's users started using all their experience making memes to bash his competitor, Hillary Clinton. The memes became so important that the Clinton campaign needed to spend a million dollars in an attempt to combat all the pro-Trump users that, might I add, were working for free. I think it would be hard to find anyone who could deny that the support for Trump on the internet was invaluable. On top of this, by the election, the online landscape was filled with political personalities that were either angry Bernie Sanders fans or Trump fanatics. So both sides were trashing the Democratic candidate. All this contributed to Donald J. Trump becoming the 45th president of the United States of America, proving my high school teacher wrong. While of course there were many other factors besides memes that swayed the election, I feel a lot of people in the mainstream don't give them enough credit. So in conclusion, that is how in only four years time the internet shifted its political alignments. But with that being said, this conservative wave has been showing signs of slowing down. The constant complaining about college students and their gender pronouns has become stale. Strong voices on the liberal side of the aisle have started to emerge on YouTube, such as ContraPoints and H Bomber Guy. And Trump is just as divisive now as he was when he first started running. So where are things headed next in terms of political trends on the internet? I really have no idea. But no matter if it's either to the left or right, at the very least it's interesting to watch. Hey everybody, before I finish this video today, I just want to give a very big thank you to my sponsor, Robinhood. Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission free. While other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, Robinhood doesn't charge any commission fees, so you can trade stocks and keep all of your profits. Plus, there is no account minimum deposit needed to get started, so you can start investing at any level. The simple, intuitive design of Robinhood makes investing easy for newcomers and experts alike. View easy to understand charts and market data, and place a trade in just four taps on your smartphone. You can also view stock collections such as 100 Most Popular. With Robinhood, you can learn how to invest in the market as you build your portfolio. Discover new stocks, track your favorite companies, and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners of what happened a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help you build your portfolio. Sign up at whathappened.robinhood.com. Again, that's whathappened.robinhood.com, and a link will be provided in the description down below.